Hey guys, my name is Alex Rondego, and I want to make this video because it's been a long time coming. I've actually wanted to make this video for a few months now, but I haven't really gotten a good chance to do it. Um, you can probably figure out why as I talk more later in this, uh, in this video. But I want to do a few things. I want to explain what happened over the past few months, and I want to talk about... So I want to talk about the ban, I want to talk about the unban. I was actually unbanned yesterday, and I'll talk more about that. And I want to just talk more about my experience in general. I want to talk about my thoughts that I've had and things like that. Just so kind of like a vloggy rambling type of thing, I guess, if you haven't figured that out <laughs> already. But let me just explain kind of really quick what happened. So this was back last season, summer 2015. I don't know the season number, 16, 17, something like that. I think it was 16. And it was week one upward and we were playing... Uh, disingenuous assertions with uh, my team and I and we did really well we started out okay we ramped up we did better and better and we um, we did really well and after the game finished one of their teammates oblivion started bringing up he's like oh we think you're heavy as cheating and he was actually one of the original guys to go to the admins I don't know if they gave them my demos if he was the one to do that but I know he was one of the original guys who went to the admins at the time you know we didn't think a whole lot of it my team and I I mean I, I had been accused before in the sense that like you know when you go on a pub and you play sniper and you start getting a few headshots and some 12 year olds like cheater it's <laughs> I mean it felt like kind of the same thing because you know I didn't I was doing anything so I didn't think much of it oblivion went to the admins and we had this conversation, he was so proud that he had finally, like, you could tell, kind of like Axio, like, he's got somebody, he's got someone in his claws, you know? And by the way, if you want to watch that, um, the POV of that match, I have that right up here. So we went to the admins, the admins took a look at it, and this was all behind my back for the most part, until I found out about it, um, a day or two later that the admins had a hold of it. Um, and on top of that, people had gone onto the forums, like, my case was created with the admins, and then it became a community thing. So the whole thing just got bigger and bigger over time. The next few days, there were threads on the TFTV forums, the UGC forums, and I tried to, you know, I made posts. I tried to reason with people and stay transparent, but nobody really seemed to care all that much. You know, people on the forums especially, they cared more about the drama and the entertainment of watching somebody get banned more than actually getting to the bottom of things and finding them out. I mean, to be fair, I don't blame them. I don't blame people who thought that I was doing something because, you know, how are they supposed to know, right? So I don't, I didn't blame them. The people that I blamed and that I got really pissed at were the people who don't care enough to see both sides. Um, I'll talk about this more in a second, but um, a lot of people on the forums were just completely shitting on me for no reason because they saw one thing and they were like, yeah, cheater of course so the whole thing just spiraled out and i i made this gigantic email of you know whatever proof that i could think of I, it took me a while to realize that how am i supposed to prove anything when i just have a demo it's it's, it's difficult it's extremely difficult and i i ended up getting banned um after the ban i had spent about two weeks you know just trying to find something that i could use i spent a good two weeks i, I calmed down i said okay i gotta this is real now i have to really do this i have to come up with something um so i spent two weeks i tried to find something that i could use you know just a little tidbit that would prove that everything that i was doing was was real and i never ended up finding anything and the reason for that is because the admins i mean one of the biggest reasons is because the admins just you know they don't tell you anything if you if you've never seen anything with bans or of course you've never gotten banned yourself which most <laughs> most of you haven't i hope um when you are the accused person in a cheating case the admins will not tell you any details anything at all kind of for the same reason that vac you know how vac works where um it'll detect a cheat but it'll actually wait a while maybe like a week or two before it actually bans you from the whatever game it is because they don't you know, VAC and Valve, they don't want actual cheaters knowing the specifics of their bans so that they can use that information to make their bans harder to detect or work better, anything like that. It's the same thing with UGC admins. You know, they didn't tell me anything. They didn't tell me what they saw. They didn't give me ticks. They didn't tell me um, what, what they thought I was using. They didn't tell me anything, which makes it, I mean, the reasoning is completely fine. It's sound. It's if a cheater does know that information, they can use it to make their hacks harder to detect. It's not, it's real. But in a false ban case, in a false, falsely accused case like mine, and I'm not the only one, I'm sure, it sucks. It really sucks because I, like I said, I spent two weeks trying to make a defense and 
I didn't know what I was defending. I didn't know what they thought I was doing. I didn't know what they saw. So all I could do is like trying to prove that everything I was doing was legit. That's a big umbrella to fill. And I eventually gave up. Two reasons. Because A, I'm a modest person. I, I mean, you guys know that. I wasn't going to go up to the admins and keep poking them like, Hey, hey, can I, I have this? Can I show you this? Can you tell me how to do that? I need to show that. I wasn't going to do that. You know, I found little things here and there, but I I understood the reasoning. I understood I understood that the admins weren't going to tell me anything, so I just rolled with it. And I said, okay, I just have to wait until I find a little golden nugget, and I never did. Um, and the second reason was that I realized after a few weeks that I was trying to prove myself to people that didn't care about me anyway. Like these were people on the forums that I didn't know. People were. Um, just completely shitting on me. There were people impersonating me, like down to the name and my my uh, where I live, on Steam, and they were making, well, not they, but one person was making. Um, he was streaming on Twitch with, uh, like, blatantly hacking, and I, from what I heard, it was under my name. So people were actually really trying to get under my skin and do something. And again, it's not because that those people actually want to find out or you know, get to the bottom of something like that. It's because they're entertained by watching somebody go down in flames like that. So it really sucked, but I stopped trying to appeal to those people. I, the cool thing was that I still had all the respect from friends and anybody who really knew me, whether it was from YouTube or streaming or just being friends. Um, I still had respect from those people, which is awesome. And I realized that I don't need to keep putting the work in to appeal to people who are not going to care anyway. So I stopped playing TF2 for a few months. That's why that's why the drought came in. I was banned. But when the community bites you like that, when you kind of realize, oh, the community doesn't give a shit. You know, I was playing heavy. I was going up the ranks little by, well, little by little. Um, and I, I was dedicated to making YouTube videos and, and mentoring new heavies. And I was broadcasting with EVL. And... The feeling that nobody gives a shit. I know that you can do all that kind of stuff. You can be the best person in the world and still do some really bad shit. But the feeling that you get when nobody gives a shit is not a good feeling. So I gave up, I stopped playing, and I had nobody to blame because I didn't blame the admins. That's their system. It is what it is. Um, the system was more at fault than the admins were. You know, they weren't going to give me any special treatment. The trolls, you know, haters gonna hate, I guess. I had nobody to blame, and I, I was just in this corner. So I stopped doing pretty much everything for a few months, and then when I got back to college a few weeks ago, I started streaming once again. And I, uh, I was streaming more. I, I have my, uh, my keyboard up on the, um, you know, up on the stream there so people can see it just in case something comes up. And about a week after I got back to school, so about one or two weeks ago, um, Oblivion, the original guy to accuse me and go to the admins, and he was so proud of himself. I, yeah, Oblivion came back on his own and apologized to me. Um, Paji, my team leader and a friend of mine, um, said, oh, Rondego, Oblivion wants to apologize. And I said, okay. <laughs> And we did, you know, he came in a mumble and he said he was sorry and he wanted to help me get unbanned because he, he didn't think I was doing anything anymore. And he ended up, I gotta, guys, I gotta give this guy a huge, huge thank you in Oblivion if you're watching this. I know I've said it a hundred times before, but thank you again because this guy ended up finding what I actually think is the key to why I eventually, so I, I eventually got unbanned and it's because Oblivion had found out um, something that he thinks that the admins had missed, which was uh, my LERP settings, my network settings, kind of. He found out that I play with a really, real, it's a minimal, minimum LERP, a 10 milliseconds interp of zero or whatever the minimum interp is. And I'm not going to spend five minutes explaining network settings. You can look all that stuff up online. But I went back to the admins and I said, hey guys, um, you know, Oblivion, this guy just turned around and he gave me some info. I was using this, and I had this network setting, and I can prove it. Can you guys reopen the case and take another look at it? And they said, sure. And a few days later, which was yesterday, I got the news that I was unbanned. And it, it's great. It's great. Because, again, when I originally got banned, I was devastated. I really was. Um, to have competitive TF2 and YouTube and EVL broadcasting, doing camera for EVL, I couldn't do that because 
they didn't want to, you know, they don't want to ban player on their uh, the roster. I had all of that just ripped away from me, and it's it was horrible. But I got to thinking about it, and I kind of realized that I play differently. I play differently than a lot of people do. Like, I, I thought back to my muscle memory MP4 video, which has become a meme now. Great. Um, and I just play differently than a lot of people, and I, and I really like finding out kind of what goes into playing in a certain way, finding out why it works, and sharing that with you guys. That's what I've done on my YouTube channel for a long time now. And I feel like I really believe that that's why I was targeted, was because someone saw that, that I, and it happens to work. I play differently, and it works. And someone saw that during that upward match, and they went to the admins, and they say, this guy's cheating. And the admins agreed with them. And the problem with that is that when someone, and I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about anybody. I'm talking about anybody who's been falsely banned, not just from TF2, but we'll talk about TF2 just for right now. Anybody who's been falsely banned, I believe, was banned because they were doing something different that the admins couldn't understand, that people couldn't understand, and that's why they take so much shit. For me, in my case, it happened to be really high sensitivity and really good tracking and really good hit reg doing a lot of damage, that kind of thing. And that, that was a combination of my network settings, uh, practice, and just playing for so long with such a high sensitivity. I've been playing, I mean, you can look at my Steam profile. I've been playing for 10 years, and I've been playing TF2 for eight years, and I've always played with high sense. Um, so these people, everybody who plays differently, it's different, but it's legit and it works. And the problem is, instead of, instead of being looked at or praised or... Uh, investigated for other people to kind of learn from them, they're banned. They're banned falsely because they play differently. So what I would say is if you're someone, you don't have to have been falsely banned yet, but if you enjoy learning how to play your class, if you enjoy the game, if you play uniquely in a way that not a lot of people see, or something that's unique to you, or something that's rare, something that's unique but is legit, make a YouTube video. Put something out there. Let people know, hey, I'm, I can do this, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Because it's not like it's a trade secret. You can put it out there. It's not like it's the Coca-Cola formula. Coca-Cola. Coca, Coca-Cola. There we go. It's not like it's the Coke formula. Make something. A forum post. A video. Let people know what you can do, and let people know how you do it, because that's what's going to drive the community. That's what's going to interest people. Like my muscle memory.mp4 video, that was supposed to make people go, wow, that's interesting. I want to learn how to do that. Because it's it's like rocket jumping. It's like doing something neat so people can learn how to do it. And that's what grows the community. It's what brings people in to play TF2. If you're someone who cares about the community, about growing the game, and eventually, I mean, Valve's going to introduce matchmaking, so the bigger that this thing becomes, the better it's going to be. If you care about it at all, then that should be something that's valuable to you. If you're someone who just dismisses everything that's different as a hack, you don't give a shit. And I don't give a shit about you. You know, I put a lot of work into learning how I do things, like looking at my own stuff, because it works. And I try to explain to people how I can do it so they can benefit from it, and then I just get shit on. How do you think that makes someone like me feel? How do you think it makes people feel who are falsely... Not just me. I mean, I know that I... Me and Marissa, I think, are the two big people, the two big cases to get unbanned from UGC. A lot of people were telling me that recently. But I'm sure there have been a lot of players, I'm sure, who didn't do anything. They get banned, and they don't know how to get themselves out of it. And why were they banned? Again, I think it's because they had something unique. They had something they were doing. It may have been dickish. It may have been not fun to play against. It may have been whatever but it was legit if they were falsely banned. And they probably had something, even if people didn't end up, end, end up uh, using it, it still would have been something that could have been a building block for the community, but instead of listening, a lot of, a lot of people just, nope, he's a cheater, not my problem, back to business as usual in TF2. And that's, that's what it comes down to, is it's TF2, it's been around for eight years, there's an update every so often, but people are fine with business as usual. Nobody cares enough to look into things and say, hey, how can I do that? Or, hey, how is that possible? Um, and I think, you know, it's sad. And if you're someone who's here to laugh at me because I'm being serious or I'm talking about my band or anything like that, if you're going to troll in chat and that's all you're going to do, if you're here, if you're going to meme and that's it, I don't give a fuck about you. You can fuck off. I really don't care anymore. This is not for you, this video. But that being said, you guys who are actually watching and you, and you care about the stuff that I'm talking about, maybe it's, maybe it's not actually 
that important? I mean, I know it's TF2. It's not that significant. Maybe I'm just making something serious out of something that doesn't really matter. You know, you, you will get some false bans from time to time. It's, it's being an anti-cheat admin sucks. It really does. It's hard to do right a lot of the time. But I still think it's something interesting to talk about. So if you guys have thoughts about that, if you think that just the, the whole idea that people who are falsely banned, I don't know how many there are, but people who are falsely banned have something useful and they, they can contribute to the community in some way and they're valuable. You know, leave something in the comments. I want to talk about this. I think it's I think it's interesting. I think it's important. Again, not just for me, but for all of UGC and all of, um, you know, anybody who's playing TF2 like this. Um, it's important. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, for the support, and sticking around and being by my side. You know who you are. There are too many people to name. Um, also, really quick before I get going here, um, thank you to Oblivion. I said that already, but also one of the UGC admins, Smobo, he was one of the only guys who actually sat down with me and heard me out and heard my side, my side of things, my side of the story, details that I wouldn't have been able to tell the other admins. So he got all that stuff from me. We had some really good conversations, and he found out a lot about my case. So huge. And he's the one who um, pushed my, you know, he, he asked the admins to reopen my case, so he was the one who got my stuff through and got me unbanned. So thank you to Oblivion, thank you to Smobo, and thank you to Paji, as much as sometimes you talking for me gets a little bit under my skin, but, you know, we have different personalities. I think we can talk about that. But again, thank you guys so much. I can't thank you enough for everything, and I'll see you guys next time.